Good morning, beloved. Beloved. In our hearts, that we welcome us all to day sixteen of When Mercy Speaks, twenty twenty four. We appreciate the grace of God over all that have been consistently following this mercy train. And for as many that are tuning in for the very first time, we appreciate you as well. What by the Youth Fellowship of Cherubim and Therapy Movement Church, through Larry District at Street New. It is a sincere and earnest prayer that in this season wherein the mercies of the Lord is speaking, it will speak great and incredible things into our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, we'll be joining through the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 9 to 12, as we look at the topic, higher ground. With great joy in our hearts, let's make welcome our distinguished pastor in person of Pastor Samson Durutoye. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, man. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, church. I want to welcome us to day 16 of um, When Message Speaks. And by the special grace of God, as announced, we'll be looking at the topic, Aya Grand. Aya Grand, and the text is in 2 Samuel 6, um, 9 to 12. Uh, if we flip through these few verses of the scripture, um, the story elicits um, the experience of um, Obededom, um, that of David, and then the hack of um, Covenant. And very few important things would then um, draw strength from this morning, even as we pray, is um, the experience of Obedidon and then um, in relation to mercy as it were. So first and foremost, one of the things we must um, you know, take cognizance of is that when mercy speaks over the life of a man, drawing strength from 2 Samuel 6, 9 to 12, we will discover that the evil that is taught and planned towards such an individual is exchange for blessing. And that we will see in verse 10. You know, David was not wanting that um, the hack of covenant stay with him, having experience, and um, you know what happens to Huza. And he was feeling like, no, the hack of covenant cannot stay with me. Where should it go? It was as though Obedodon was the sacrificial lamb they weren't going to give out. And why they thought of sending the hack of covenant to his house? It was a different story entirely. Second thing we must know is that um, when mercy speaks over an individual and over the life of a person, what kills others spears you. I don't know whatever it is that is happening all around us, that is happening in your community, in your environment. I am praying this morning that no matter how difficult it may be, no matter how you know, dangerous it may seem, you will be spared from all of such in the name of Jesus. When mercy speaks over the life of a man, such a person would not make error, <laughs> or his error will be overlooked. And that was what happened to Uza. Scripture told us that the Lord, the hack of the of covenant, struck Uza because of his error. 
But it was, the reverse was the case when the Ark of Covenant got to the house of Obededom. He didn't make such error. And so what when Mercy speaks over the life of a man, his, his journey, his steps, his, no, his handwork, they will be error free. And when he even makes error, what happens is that those errors are overlooked. I am praying for us as we journey to a higher ground, that those errors you have made in the past that is haunting you, the Lord by his mercy, is erasing them in the name of Jesus. When mercy speaks over the life of a man, what happens Amen. is that your foolishness becomes God's wisdom. Nobody, in fact, it is expected that Obed Edom should reject it. Paradventure, if you were, you know, pre-informed about what happened earlier, he should reject the Ark of Covenant. He should run away, but he didn't. It was a foolish, uh, 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 you know, step. But it became the wisdom of God through which what he was blessed. You will discover that when mercy speaks over the life of a man, his minute effort becomes amplified for liftings. You know, scripture did not, you know, ex um, you know relate exactly what Obedodom did. But I can testify that you cannot treat the hack of covenant anyhow and you will be blessed. Obedodom definitely did something which was not communicated to us. So what I discover is that no matter how small or how, how minute it may seem, definitely would have taken care of the Ark of Covenant. And in doing so, what happened? The Lord blessed him. I pray that each of your little efforts, no matter how minute, no matter how small, the Lord is amplifying them for your liftings in the name of Jesus. When message yeah. speaks over the life of a man, what happens is that time is compressed to walk for your for in your favor. And you will see that in verse 11. You, you know, I, I'm sure people were monitoring and were expecting that Obedidum should just drop dead one day. And in the process of monitoring, they could, you know, and, and, and testify that within the space of three months, instead of dying, instead of, you know, collapsing, instead of being uh, nowhere to be found, what happens is that he became blessed. I am praying this morning for everyone under the sound of my voice that no matter how much you have wasted so much time and it seems like the time cannot be redeemed within the space of three months, if Obed Edom case can turn around, I am praying that in this season of mercy, the mercy of God will turn the time around and will turn the tides in your favor in the name of Jesus. When mercy speak, over the life of a man, you know, you, your rising with dumbfound the wise and the theory of men. I, I, I believe we can see that in the life of Pebedodom. Everybody thought differently, but the Lord turned things around. They were dumbfounded. It were the people. Pebedodom was not announcing his blessing. He was not announcing what happened to him. It were the people that saw it. They were dumbfounded and have to report the same case to what? To David. When mercy speaks over the life of a man, you will lack words to explain how and why. You won't know what you have done. What have I done? You will ask yourself, how did I do it? I don't know. How come I, I can enter into this uh, uh, level of height? How come I can enter into this depth of blessing? It is because mercy is speaking. My prayer for us this morning, that as we journey to higher ground, the Lord is turning things around and making his blessing so enormous that we'll not be able to explain why and how in the name of Jesus. So when we look Amen. at the topic higher grants, more so in relation to the life of um, 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 Obededom, we will discover that higher grant, whatever level you have presently, you are on a height because there are definitely people who are below you. When God is now promising us higher grant, it means that to every high grant, to every height, there are higher grants. So one thing that is very pertinent and important while we journey to higher grant is that mercy does not encourage um, laziness. That we're speaking of God's mercy and we're in relation to higher grant does not mean that we go to bed, we do nothing. It doesn't mean that we become careless about the things in our care. It doesn't mean that we become irresponsible and we become coward. Coward. It doesn't mean that we, we leave things to just work out by themselves. No, there are responsibilities the Lord will be placing in our care, even as we journey to higher grant. And in, in, you know, in coming to that depth of that higher grant, these very four important things are important. Number one, you must assume a high level of commitment. Number two, you must assume a high level of discipline. Number four, you must assume a high level of sensitivity and be focused. Number four, 
you must be willing to sacrifice. All this fall I have carved out from the life of Obededom. If Obededom did not take good care of the Ark of Covenant, the reverse would have been the case. If Obededom was not disciplined and focused, and he, he, he probably would have thought that, let me just abandon the Ark of Covenant. He's killing every other person. But he did what? He did what was needful. He did what was expected. And when he did that, what happened? The Lord blessed him. I am praying tonight, this morning rather, that as we journey forth to higher ground, that things we need to do, that, you know, the responsibilities that Lord is placing in our care, that we need to, you, we need to pay attention to, to come into that height the Lord has promised and has programmed for our lives. The Lord is granting us that grace this morning in the name of Jesus. I Amen. said to myself, what does it mean to come into higher ground? It means to have a change of stature or to, to increase in value. To come into higher grants, is, it means to, 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 you know, to come into an elevated place beyond the ordinary, beyond where the normal people are, you know, beyond your present status. That is what it means to come into higher grants. It means to be in a place of comfort and rest. You can refer to it as a real boat, at least for that moment. It is a place of clarity of purpose, clarity of you know, vision, insight, and depth of revelation. When a man comes into higher ground, you know, there is open revelation of what God intends and proposed for that individual. In fact, what happens is that that person begins to leave their mind, the purpose, and the intent of God at that very moment. So I discover that while we journey to higher ground, this is very important. The devil doesn't want us to be in higher ground. In fact, there are factors that are fighting against us getting there because what happens is that when we do, we begin to enjoy more rest. One of the things I see as an hindrance to higher ground is first, stagnancy. Can we pray this morning? I want us to pray that every program stagnancy and every spirit of stagnancy that is working against my ascension to higher ground. The Lord, this morning, let them be paralyzed. Will you open your mouth and tell it to God in prayer? Whatsoever has been programmed to make me stagnant in a place, so much so that the height, the higher ground the Lord has promised, I will not be able to come into it. Can we pray this morning that the Lord will eliminate every spirit of stagnancy hovering around our lives, around our community, around our home, around our family, even in our backgrounds, that the Lord will eliminate them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, most precious name we are prayed. Another thing that stands on the way Amen. to higher ground of impatience. Impatience. I, there is this picture that comes to my mind when, when, when I was looking at the word impatience. I, 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 some of us would have come across it. There were these two pictures. Two people were trying to dig to get to a treasure. One was still far behind while the other was already close. But because he's been digging and digging and he's not getting to where he needs to get to, what happened? He gave up and he returned back. Can we pray and tell it to God? The patience that is required for me to come into the heights that Lord has promised and has proposed. Lord, grant unto me this morning. Can you open your mouth and tell it to God in prayer? The devil throws so many things at us to make us lose patience. And then we let go of the promises of the Father. Some people even go to the extent of committing suicide. haven't waited and they could not wait any longer. Can we pray this morning that every spirit of impatience that would make me lose out of that which the Lord has promised, Lord, this morning, let them be sent out of my life in the name of Jesus. I refuse to give in to impatience in the name of Jesus. That all that thing we see as an hindrance to higher ground is fear. The enemy throws fear at us, makes us believe that it is not possible because it has never been done in our family before. Because by, by virtue of the history of your lineage, maybe it is, not, it is not possible. And by so doing, it throws fear at us. I want us to pray that every spirit of fear fighting my ascension die today in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear fight my ascension, every spirit of fear, and you know, you, you know, antagonizing my rising. This morning, I declare that they die. Let them diminish. You know, let them vanish away in the name of Jesus. But where me, don't deny love. 
lati ma le egoke loruko ti jesu e pora loruko ti jesu e pora loruko ti jesu e pora for Amen. in jesus most precious name we have prayed we would say Amen. that uh, another thing that hinders a man from coming into that height the lord has promised is the glory of yesterday i mentioned earlier that to every height there are higher ground yes you may think that you are in a height but there are higher ground to where you are so when you hold on to what is the past you cannot come into what god has promised i want us to pray that lord i let go of the past and i hold Amen. on to the promise of the father for my Amen. life in the name of jesus Jesus. I let go of the things of the past. I let go of the glory of the past. I let go of the success of the past. And I lay hold of the promise of the Lord for my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. I lay hold of the promise of the Father for my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus most precious name we are prayed. Can we pray? One other thing, which is the fifth one and maybe the last, is when you gather when you are around negative vibes, negative and wrong association, they are not going anywhere. And so they don't want you also to go anywhere. I want us to pray that every negative vibe surrounding me, Lord, dissociate me from them this morning. Every negative association, wrong association surrounding my life that is, you know, pulling me back from getting to the heights the Lord has promised. Lord, I pray this morning that you dissociate me from such wrong vibes in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause there to be a separation between me and every negative vibes, hindering me from coming into the height and into the blessing of the Father for my life in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' most precious name we are prayed. Scripture was saying in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9, he said, for a great and effectual door is opened unto me. He said, but there are many adversaries. Don't worry about the adversaries who have dealt with them. Let us pray and tell you to God. Oh, Lord, let the new and effectual door of sources, effectual door of liftings, let them be open unto me. In my business, in my career, in my studies, all that I lay my hands upon, Lord, a door of effectual, let the door of blessing, let the door of effectual sources be open unto me in the name of Jesus. Will you turn it to God in prayer? That eh, as I journey forth, let the door, let an effectual door of sources, let an effectual door of liftings be open unto me in the name of Jesus. Be open unto me in the name of Jesus. Jesus, for in Jesus, most precious name we are praying. Amen. Can we pray and tell you to God? In our, in, in our journey to higher ground, what happens is that God positions men, God positions resources to work in our favor. Can we pray and declare it that let there be a convergence of Every resource is required for my lifting. In the name of Jesus. Is it a gift of men that is required? Let there be a convergence of it. Is it a gift of finance? Let there be a convergence. The gift of help. Let there be a convergence of all the resources required for my liftings. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let there be a convergence of all that is required for my lifting. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus most precious name we are praying. Can we pray and tell it to God that as I go forth today, I am properly positioned for opportunities in the name of Jesus. As I go out today, I am aligned. I am properly positioned for opportunities in the name of Jesus. I align with the will of the Father for my life and I take hold of every opportunity that comes my way in the name of Jesus. I am positioned for opportunities in my business. I am properly positioned for opportunities in my career. In the name of Jesus, I am properly positioned for opportunities in my marriage. In the name of Jesus, in every endeavor, I am properly aligned. In the name of Jesus, for in Jesus' most precious name, we are prayed. Can you please place your hand on your chest wherever you are? Can you place your hand on your chest? I decree by the word of the Lord, scripture says, He sent forth His word, and what His word did was to heal them of every diseases. One of the things the enemy throws to a man while he's rising and he's getting to the higher ground the Lord promised, he throws sickness, he throws diseases, and he finds a way of amputating them and making them irrelevant 
in that high place. I pray for you that as the Lord lived and the spirit is alive, whatsoever the enemy is throwing against and at you to walk against you, I declare them back to the sender in the name of Jesus. I declare consigning your life. That is, as you go out today, the Lord will order your steps and he will bring you into opportunities. He will bring you into the blessings he has declared and he has promised in the name of Jesus. I Amen. declare concerning your life that whether the enemy likes it or not, whether the haters of destiny in your offices, in your business, in your career, whether they like it or not, they will bow to the God of mercy in your life in the name of Jesus. I decree by the power of God that as the Lord lives it and his spirit is alive, mercy will speak for you when you go out. Mercy will speak for you when you come back. Wherever you go, the mercy of God, the voice of God's mercy will be loud enough to silence every negative vibes in the name of Jesus. I decree this morning, Go Amen. and celebrate. Go and enjoy mercy. Be in combination in the name of Jesus. Amen. For in Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Lati la oru ti jo fi dewo oruko Oluwa ni ke ayin Oluwa ga lori gbogbo orilede Ogo re si ogo re si wa lori awon orun ta lo da bi Olorun wa ti o gbe ara le ga en to re ti o gbe ibi giga en to re sile lati wo nti o wa ni orun ati aye o gbe talasa talaka soke lati ni erupe wa o gbe olukonju soke lati ori atun wa ki o le mu joko pelu awon malade ati pelu awon malade niyan o mu agun obirin pe inule lati ma sonu ni oluwa e ma yin oluwa e ma lo ni alaafia bi e ti lo owo agbara olorun ko ma ba yin lo aye yin ko gboro oluwa owo agbara olorun ko fa yin koke ko fa yin si bi giga ko fa yin si bi ise logo ko fa yin si bi ibi amuse owo oluwa ko so yin bi asegun o pe yin ga ju awon ota yin lo ko fi okan yin bale bi e tin lo loni e lo pelu anu olorun ati ba oju re pade ati ise logo re ati ni gbogbo oju aye yin o ri ofe Jesu Kristi Oluwa wa ife mi mo ojo olorun idapo ti emi mimo ko fa yin goke ko fa yin si agbata to ga ju yin lo agbata ti wonu ogo ni oruko Jesu Oluwa wa Ami, 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 Loroko Jesu. Glory to God in the highest for that powerful session. We appreciate today's minister in person of Pastor Samson Dorotoye and our shepherd for that powerful grace. God bless you, sirs. We also acknowledge everyone for availing yourself this morning. It is our prayer that the blessings of today rest and abide with us all in Jesus' name. We want to encourage us all to like our social media pages on YouTube at Youth Fellowship IONU and Facebook at CNSYF to enhance a wider reach. In the same vein, we want to notify us all that When Mercy Speaks is now available on Instagram and Twitter at CNSYF. Indeed, this mercy train is expanding and we return all glory back to God. 
do remember to also share your testimonies using the email testimonies at cnsyf.org, testimonies at cnsyf.org. And do well to share our flyers as you invite your friends, families, and colleagues to be partakers of the blessings of this season. We also implore us to always check our social media handles at CNSYF for nuggets that will stir up our spirits. On that note, we want to wish us all a wonderful day ahead. See you tomorrow at your new. Yeah.